Hello, let's continue a discussion on KL divergence. So we have discussed the formula, we have discussed the intuition, we have discussed about entropy and cross entropy. Uh, so the KL divergence given by this formula is always positive, is always more than or equal to zero. It is equal to zero when P equals Q. So it means when we have P equals to Q, this will be P by P, this will be equal to one and log of one is zero and then the whole term will become zero. But all in all, it is a positive quantity equal to zero when, when, and when, if and only if Q is equal to P. There are multiple ways to prove this, but we are going to use Jensen's inequality, Jensen's, Jensen's uh, or Jensen's, I don't know. Uh, some people call it Jensen, some people call it Jensen. So Jensen's inequality to prove why the scale divergence is always more than or equal to zero. So let's first get some insights as to what is Jensen's inequality. So Jensen in an Jensen's inequality for convex and concave functions is defined as, let's say if we have a convex function, if like this, and we have two points x1 and x2, and we have the values for those points as f of x1 and f of x2. So it says for any lambda that is in between zero to one, if we have a point in between x1 and x2 as lambda x1 plus one minus lambda x2. And if we get the value at this point for this function, that is this, this, this particular point. So this point is always going to be less than this particular point, that is this one. So it says, intuitively it says, that the function is always going to be less than or it will always lie below the line that is going to join x1 and x2. This is, we can write like function of this particular point that is, that is this one comes in here. This function is always going to be less than, always lie below this line that is given by lambda f of x1 plus one minus lambda f of x2. That is lambda f of x1 plus one minus lambda f of x2. That is somewhere this point, this one. Same thing for concave functions. So if a function is concave, then the function is always lie, going to lie above the line that is going to join x1 and x2. And this can be mathematically written as this function at any point that is between x1 and x2. So if we just try to change these lambda, lambda values, then all the points between x1 and x2 for this function are always going to be more than or lie above this line given by lambda f of x1 plus 1 minus lambda f of x2. Okay. For convex, function will be below the line. For concave, function will be up the, above the line. Very simple. So this, this is the Jensen's inequality. So if you want to prove whether a function is convex or not, if you are able, able to prove this thing, then we can prove that the function is convex. If you, if you are able to prove this point, then we can say that the function is concave. Very simple. This can, this point, lambda x1 plus one minus lambda x2, can also be written as lambda 1 x1 plus lambda 2 x2 where we can have lambda 2 as 1 minus lambda 1. So we can say that lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is equal to 1 so that we can get lambda 2 equal to 1 minus lambda. Here we can say that both lambda 1 and lambda 2 are in between 0 to 1. So if we now extend this fact and if we, instead of just lambda 1 and lambda 2, if we have lambda 1 to lambda n, all these lambdas lying between 0 to 1, lambda i, element of 0 to 1, and if we sum them up, lambda 1 plus 2 plus lambda 3 plus lambda to lambda n, that is summation of lambda i is equal to 1. If, if these two properties 
are there for lambda, then our Jensen's inequality for for convex function can be written as again the function is going to lie below this line. So what we had is in this case what we are having is lambda one x one plus lambda two x two. So summation of the product of lambda and x. Here we are having summation of lambda and the value at that function. Okay, so we are having summation of lambda i x i is always going to be less than summation of lambda i times f of x i. And the sign will just going to be opposite for concave functions. That is, these are going to be the same. Only the sign is going to reverse. But now the function lies above the line. That is, function of summation of lambda i x i is going to be more than summation of lambda i f of x i. Keeping these things, these, these equations in mind, extending our fact to, let's consider some probability distribution. So, the properties of property of, let's say this is a discrete pro probability distribution. So, the properties of these are, all the values are going to lie between 0 and 1 and summation of all the values are going to be equal to 1, right? P of xi, element of 0 to 1, and summation of all P of xi from, for all the i's is equal to 1. Is there a similarity? Right? Is it equal to, is, is it uh, as same as lambda i? So we can, because lambda i also, for each and every lambda i was lying between 0 and 1, and if we sum all the lambda i's, those were actually nothing but equal to 1. So if we say that, let's assume lambda i is equal to p of x i. And if we again the Jensen's inequality in here, that is if, if we simply write for convex function where the function was below the line, I can simply replace this lambda i with p of x i, lambda i with p of x i. So now my Jensen's inequality using the probability distribution becomes function of summation of p of x i times x i is less than or equal to summation of p of x i times f of x i. If you observe this, this is nothing but the expectation of the value x, this random variable x. See, expectation of x is given by summation of probability of x times the value. Right? We are sampling it from this distribution and same thing we can write for this is the expectation of f of x i so this is expectation of f of x where x is coming from this distribution so for convex function we can say that function of function of expectation of something this x is the something function of expectation of something is less than is less than expectation of function of something. This something is x, x is here, x is here. The function of expectation of something is less than expectation of function of something. Right? So to remember, for convex, function is always below, right? So function is of what? Expectation of something is less than expectation of function of something. And the sign will be reversed for concave. So for concave, we can simply write this formula, this formula as this one. So the function of, function lies above, right? So function of expectation of x is more than or equal to expectation of function of x. And this x is something. We can replace this something with anything. So this becomes this. Now let's take, an, let's take a good function. Let's consider log. What is log? Log is given by this. This log is a concave function. Okay, log of x is a concave function. Similarly, negative of log x is a convex function. Okay, so as simple as that. If you draw a line, the function will always be lying above. If we draw a line, the function will always be lying below, just to prove that intuitively. So, what was the Jensen's inequality for concave functions? Function of expectation is always more than expectation of function. Okay, log is. Uh, oh, sorry log is that function okay 
the function of expectation that is log of expectation is more than expectation of log and this is a very very important property this is this is applicable for discrete random variables this and continuous random variables both but this is a very important property used in uh, concept of variational inference or elbow we will not be going into details of variational inference and elbow uh, in this discussion, but this is a very, very, very important property used in there. We have to keep this in mind. So, log of expectation is more than expectation of log of something. Okay. Now we again come back to the KL divergence. Okay. So now we are just saying it for one more time. Now, KL divergence again can be written as we know this fact now. We have seen this expectation under distribution P log of P by Q. From Jensen's inequality, we also know that log of expectation of X is more than expectation of log of X. I mean, this function will always be more than the expectation. Okay. If we put a negative sign here, negative here, negative here, negative here, negative here, this, this sign is going to be reversed. Okay, now we are just taking this here and this one here. Okay, so expectation just 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 manipulating these things. The negative of expectation of log of something is more than or equal to negative of log of expectation of that. Now, if you come back here to this formula, if we flip this and take the negative sign out, okay, we are taking the negative sign out. We are Flipping this, so it becomes log, instead of log of P of Q, P by Q, it becomes log of Q by P. Okay. The, so this becomes expectation of log of something. Here something is Q by P. So now if we use this property, if we use this property in here, the negative of expectation of log is more than log of X, negative of log of expectation here. Okay. This, if we expand will become and let's consider continuous variable this will become integral of p of x q by x and q by x by p by x as simple as that then this p of x p of x get cancelled and we are just left with integral of q of x dx and what do we have this for okay this is equal to one because we know that integral of distribution this is nothing but a probability distribution right so if we just sum all the probability all the values of the probability distribution we are getting one so this becomes one and log of one is zero so we get KL divergence that is equal to this in turn be more than or equal to this quantity that ultimately turns out to be zero that is scale divergence is always more than equal to zero. So we can write that KL divergence of P Q is always more than equal to zero. And this we have proved using the Jensen's inequality B. This being a very, very, very important equation. Okay. So what we have learned so far is what do we mean by information or self-information that is negative of log of p of x. What do we mean by entropy? Entropy is just the average amount of information or average surprise or average or randomness. That means the randomness that is expectation of that information coming from a probability distribution p of x that is can be given as integral of log of p of x times p of x dx. What is cross entropy? Cross entropy is again the average information. If we assume a distribution q to be equal to our actual distribution p and that can be given by expectation of log of q because now we are in calculating the information in terms of q instead of log of p and then what is scale divergence scale divergence is just the relative entropy that is the difference between the cross entropy and the entropy that can also be written like this so we have seen the different properties of scale divergence that is it is not symmetric it is always more than equal to zero. 
we have seen that minimizing the gross entropy is equivalent to minimizing the KL divergence. And we have proved that KL divergence is always a positive entity using the Jensen's inequality. Okay. Thank you.